Okay, so did I tell you I love you and that Jesus loves you? Yeah, I did. Yesterday's uh, recording may have offended some of you, and I'm really sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, isn't that good that we live in a country that you can have your opinions and I can have my opinions? And I hope you'll just take the time to hear me out for the rest of this uh, little series that I'm going through because it's not so much about right now who's in Trump or Obama or whoever. Let's just open our eyes and ears to the word and listen to the rest, okay? What is righteousness? Because we've been talking about righteousness and we've been talking about a righteous revolution. So what does righteous mean? Here's what righteous means. It means the ability to stand in the presence of God without guilt or shame. In other words, how do you stand in the presence of God? Without guilt or shame because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. So how do we stand in, the, how do we have the ability to stand in the presence of God? How, how was Abraham able to do that? Well, in his case, it says his faith was accounted unto him as righteous. Now, did he sin? Yes, he did. But he was still considered by God a righteous man. And he was a friend of God. Okay, because of the new covenant, we talked about that last week, because of what uh, Christ did for us at Calvary, he has made us God's righteousness. In other words, he's given us the ability to stand in the presence of a holy and just God. Now, how did that happen? Well, his blood was shed, and his blood satisfied the judgment against the sin, and not just a couple sins, but all sin. His blood satisfied the judgment against sin. And therefore, we can come and put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is not our righteousness, but the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God then, it's, it's, the Bible tells us several times that God looks upon the hearts of men. So then when he looks at my heart, he looks through the righteous breastplate that I have on, which is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He sees me through the eyes of, the, of, of Jesus Christ's righteousness. Do you see that? So, and, and he says, remember last week we talked about this. He said, I'm going to make a new covenant. And this new covenant, I'm going to, in this new covenant, I'm going to write my laws upon their hearts and upon their minds. It's already in here. It's there, available. And I'll be their God and they shall be my children. Right? Therefore, we have that all available to us. And, and, and we talked about it last week that the, 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 uh, a kingdom of God is on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. So everything works from the inside out. What we're trying to do now is trying to allow this kingdom of God to be manifest in our life. We need, we're trying to let, remember it says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that it, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In other words, I'm trying to allow Christ to live his life out through me so that the kingdom of God principles, the kingdom of God um, uh, promises and everything else are manifested in my life to the world. So how do I do that? Well, because I've been made the righteousness. So now in Hebrews it says, come boldly before the throne of God. I can come boldly. Why? Because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He's made me the righteousness of God in him. In him. In him. Apart from him, my righteousness is as of filthy rags. So apart from him, I can do nothing. Apart from him, I'm a worm. But when I have him in me, when, when I receive all that he's done for me, I can stand boldly before the throne of God without fault. Are, are without guilt and without shame. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 6 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. In other words, God or Jesus Christ was 100% God. But he was also 100% man. And him being 100% man did not take away from his deity or rob from his deity. Nor did his deity keep him from being 100% man. 
And then he goes on to, uh, to um, tell us in, in John chapter 17, he prays for you and I and he says, Father, let them be one with me even as I am one with him, with you I mean. Let them be one with me as I'm one with you that we might be one in each other. So what Jesus is doing is trying to bring this unity between us and God. That separation took place when sin came into this world, when you and I sinned. It separated us from God. But now we have been purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and we've been brought back into right standing or righteousness before God. And so we can go before him. And Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, you'll have it. That's amazing. Whew. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. Once again, I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.